The Arduino has been very successful at putting embedded computing in the hands of users. So I want to talk a few minutes about context and, the, and just get you oriented on the Arduino. First, what is it? Uh, here's a shot of the Arduino website. The Arduino is a couple things. It's this little circuit board, which uh, has a microcontroller on it that can interface to hardware. It's a store and foundation that promotes the idea and software. It's also kind of an open source movement that the design is open source. And there are many copies. In fact, actually, the board we're going to use in class is one of these. This is a basically Arduino clone made from the open source designs by Elegoo, um, which we buy in quantity for a less, lesser price. And it's otherwise uh, equally equal to the Arduino. So what it really is, I mean, the Arduino came out in about 2005 as a small embedded computing platform, came out of Italy. And at the time, it wasn't an innovation in terms of capability or technology. It used a contemporary uh, microcontroller of the time. But the real innovation was ease of use. It was packaged on a board that was very accessible. It came with an integrated development environment with tools for very easily getting your program running on the board and a carefully selected language, which was beginner friendly and made it easier to start programming. At the time, there were many other microprocessor components you could buy, but typically it was much more work to get code onto them involving uh, setting up compiler chains and elaborate tools or professional level tools. Things like the basic stamp were very proprietary and quite closed. So the innovation was as much kind of an open platform around kind of beginner friendly principles. And in some sense, it's a little bit of a victim of its own success. Here it is, it's, you know, it's 15 years later, and we're still using it. It's quite a small, simple platform. But the same token, there's a ton of resources online, there's user communities, lots and lots of sample code and tutorials that have been written around this that make it a very easy starting point, um, even as the hardware itself is, in some sense, uh, quite primitive. It has spawned a lot of clones, both in terms of the specific boards, as also like more advanced boards that operate on the same IDE. And in some sense, that is really the secret now, is that the same programming system and the same sort of philosophy of how to write the programming language and tools has now been expanded to include many other boards, often much faster and bigger ones, um, but that still sort of hew to the same general design style of the Arduino and are also equally user-friendly. A um, couple of commercial ones to note, there's the Teensy, uh, which has got a ARM chip on it that's a 32-bit chip that's much faster. Um, there's also like the Node MCU, like the ESP8266 ones. The number doesn't matter. What matters is that they're very internet friendly. They're a very popular chip that can get on a Wi-Fi network and put embedded hardware onto the internet. Um, and then the other thing is that there's ways of making add-on boards called shields that plug on top of these boards that extend the functionality. And there's hundreds of those in the market that are a kind of one-stop way of adding hardware onto an Arduino. We're instead going to build up circuits on breadboards and kind of start from just the route platform instead of using shields. But just it's good to know all this stuff is out there to be available. Now, we're going to just sort of talk a little bit about kind of the specs of the thing. As computing goes, it's pretty primitive. It's an 8-bit microcontroller. It has a 16 megahertz clock, which is a tiny fraction of your typical like 2 to 4 gigahertz you know, computer clock these days. Uh, two kilobytes of RAM, such a tiny amount of memory compared to, I mean, literally uh, a typical desktop has, you know, uh, sort of 8 to 16 gigabytes now. That's literally millions of times more. Uh, 32 kilobytes of flash for program storage. Again, a very small program store for very small programs. And then it has um, analog inputs and outputs. And I think that's the key is that the physical pins here allow one to easily just plug wires into it that gets access to like low level digital IO. This is an Arduino Uno, the sort of slightly larger cousin of it is the Mega, um, which is a similar 8-bit microcontroller, but has slightly better specs. Um, but even then it raises the ROM to 256K and the RAM by factor four to 8K. It's still quite a uh, sort of small computing device. So our use for it really is as an IO device. The real win on the Arduino is that access to hardware is almost trivially easy. You can plug a wire into a socket and have a connection. The, uh, the number of layers of software to like manipulate that hardware is very small and simple. So your programs run very close to the hardware. Um, you can manipulate digital wire signals at very high rates because even though the overall computational rates are low, um, the amount of overhead to accomplish things in the digital world is also very, very low. So they're good for kind of low latency control of sort of simple projects. Um, where they're not so good for is things that require a lot of computation or especially a lot of memory. So it's possible to do some audio projects on an Arduino if you're clever, although it's tricky without that much memory.
um, all integer computation, all, all using sort of just no memory. Um, video is equally very difficult, although people have, have created video signals with Arduinos before, but it's, it's very difficult. Um, I think the big secret for us is if we need more computation, we have access to it across the serial port. There's a USB port that can plug into a host computer, and with adding that connection to the host, we can then send data back and forth to a host computer and access kind of arbitrary level amount of computing and other resources. The downside, of course, is it's communicating at fairly low rates across a serial port over USB, so uh, the limitations of being the latency of getting data on and off the Arduino. That said, the hardware is quite capable. There are hobby-grade CNC machines that are run entirely by an Arduino, including generating paths and curves and controlling accelerations and decelerations of the hardware. Um, with good programming, that computation can be really stretched to do quite a bit. The limitation being those CNC machines are also depending upon a host computer sending down the files as they cut because they have not enough memory to actually store much. So using the Arduino involves a kind of careful attention to like choosing exactly the right kind of problem to solve with it. But for our purposes, controlling simple motor-driven and hobby server-driven mechanisms with sort of low bandwidth input from like switches and single point sensors, there's more than enough computation to use. And as a kind of sequencer controller, it ends up still being a very, very useful platform.